A comic strip created, written, and drawn by an artist in Portland is heading to the small screen. Lincoln Pierce created the comic Big Nate. Now it's going to be adapted into an animated television series on Nickelodeon. Pierce created the comic strip in 1991. It appears online and in more than 400 newspapers worldwide. We sat down with Pierce about a year ago to talk about his interesting career. When you look back now, do you say, thank heaven that I was a teacher for a few years because it really gave me an insight into young people that I otherwise would not have? I enjoyed it. There's no doubt I enjoyed it. I, I was teaching kids, high school boys, who were older than the kids that I write about, but they weren't necessarily, all, even though they were in high school, I wouldn't say they were all that more mature than your typical middle schooler. And your own memories of middle school, are they still vivid to oh, you? Oh, wicked. Yeah, definitely. Big Nate has been an 11-year-old in sixth grade for going on 28 years yes. now? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Did you ever imagine, in your wildest flights of fancy, when you started writing it, in 1991 that the strip would keep going this long. Oh, I hoped. You know, newspapers obviously have their struggles these days, but people still want their comics. People love comics, so they'll find them online, and I think there's always going to be an audience for sort of the traditional daily comic strip. You've been writing the daily comic strip since 1991. You've done eight Big Nate books? Yeah, I did. I wrote eight Big Nate novel. I call them hybrid books. We, we're trying to figure out what to call these books because they're really not graphic novels. It's a little pathetic that you did eight of them and as I understand it, the series has come to an end and you still don't know what to call them? <laughs> I know, that is sad. <laughs> You're now going in a fresh direction. You've got a new book out called yes. Max and the Midnights. What was the spark of inspiration? There were a lot of sparks. I think maybe the first spark was when I was a really little kid. Did you, did you watch Looney Tunes? Yes. Yeah, so there's a, there's a Daffy Duck cartoon where he is, they're spoofing Robin Hood. Look no further, good friar, for I am he for whom thou seekest. I am Robin Hood. Oh, uh, kid, uh, cut it out. I'm, I'm serious. If you don't know where he is, just say so. But honest and truly, I am Robin Hood. Sure you are. That was the first time that Robin Hood was kind of on my radar screen. And then soon after that, probably watching Channel 8 one afternoon or something, I saw the old Errol Flynn Robin Hood that I think... Which is great. Which is a fabulous movie. So I sort of got interested in these sort of like middle-aged adventure tales. Purse realized there was a lot of comic potential in spoofing this classic genre, and he had his idea for Max and the Midnights. You know, for many years I've been writing about this sixth grade kid, and he is pretty much locked into this school setting. And I thought, I want to I want to tell an adventure story where this character and some other supporting characters are kind of on a road, a road trip, like a quest. What he ended up creating was a story about Max, an apprentice troubadour who wants to be a knight. One of the best pieces of writing advice of all time is leave out the boring parts that readers tend to skip. I would think that's especially <laughs> crucial when you're writing for readers age 8 to 12. A really important lesson for me is show not tell, because I think your average kid would rather see someone get hit in the face with a pie than read about it. You do all the illustration by hand yourself? I do. Which is not necessarily the standard. People may not realize this, but a lot of comic strips are not drawn by their creators by hand. It's true. Purse does not have an assistant who can draw his characters and doesn't use technology to create certain images. It's not a perfect system, but it's the one that works for him. Usually the mistake isn't bad enough hopefully it's not, that you have to really start over. In his studio at home, Purse is already working on another book about Max. Now, I thought when I started this book it would be a one-off. I just wanted to sort of take a breather. I didn't necessarily want to do a whole other series of books. So I said, I'll just tell a standalone adventure story. But while I was working on it, I thought, I really like these characters. I could definitely tell more stories with these characters. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Big Nate doesn't have an air date yet on Nickelodeon. It is expected to be a 26-episode series. It'll be fun to see it when it comes out.